Hey everybody, welcome back. Thanks for joining me for this episode of ATP, Ask the Pastor. I'm Pastor Joshua Sullivan at Holy Cross Lutheran Church in Kerrville, Texas. Hey, real quick, if you like coffee as much as I do, and if you're always looking for a new mug to sport whilst you drink your coffee and whilst you watch ATP, click on the link in the video description below and get yourself an ATP coffee mug. You'll be glad you did. Today's question. Dear Pastor, what do you think of True Christianity by Johann Arndt? He lived during the age of Lutheran orthodoxy, but his devotional book was controversial among Lutheran theologians. Many think that it led to the foundation of pietism. Have you read it? And what do you think of Arndt's True Christianity? All right, so like you said, Arndt was a Lutheran pastor. Uh, he lived from 1555 to 1621. He was an older contemporary of Johann Gerhardt, and he was even the bishop of Gerhardt's hometown. And so the two became very close friends. Arndt's most famous work, True Christianity, uh, consists of four books written from 1605 to 1611. Uh, and it is not an understatement to say that it is probably the most famous Lutheran devotional booklet ever written. However, that being said, popularity doesn't equal orthodoxy. Arndt's work like you said, was quite controversial even in his own day, and it managed to catch the attention of Nicholas Hunius, a Lutheran theologian. Hunius had been studying the theology of a Lutheran pastor named Valentin Weigel. Weigel had served as a Lutheran pastor in Germany and had publicly subscribed to the Book of Concord, but privately and anonymously had been producing vast amounts of literature that was teaching things contrary to the Book of Concord and attacking that theology. His private writings are full of mysticism, Kabbalism, and the alchemy of Paracelsus. Now, Hunius investigated Weigel's writings and finding in them all sorts of unscriptural ideas, chief of which was the idea that people could know Christ apart from Scripture and that you could even find God within yourself. So Weigel disparaged anything external. He called the Scriptures ambiguous. Uh, and useless for converting people. He disparaged the office of the ministry, theological education, uh, worship services, and even the hearing of sermons. He's called all of these things detrimental to the inner life of the Christian. Hunius uh, quotes Weigel, We seek understanding from a heart illumined from within, not from a book. All knowledge of divine matters comes from within and not from books. The apostles teach and write nothing else but that very thing which lies within us. Sermons do not send the word and faith into a person's heart, but only stir up the things concealed in the heart. They have neither strength nor power. All sermons are empty and useless unless there be an internal preacher, for all things must come from within a person. A person sees the heavenly blessings of all things in Christ within, with his internal eye. For Weigel, all knowledge about God, and even God himself, is only found within the human heart. Hunius exposed Weigel's mystical Paracelsist theology in his 1619 work, uh, Principia Theologiae Fanaticae, which you can get from Repristination Press for the first time in English. In 1625, Hunius wrote a letter to Johann Gerhardt who was a good friend of Johann Arndt, and he shared his concerns that Arndt's true Christianity was an effort to spread this Paracelsian mysticism throughout Germany. Now, Gerhard defended his old friend's personal orthodoxy and his love for the Lutheran confessions, but Gerhard also admitted that there were phrases uh, that needed to be uh, expunged. They could be explained in a positive light. Uh, however, the entirety of Book 3 of Arndt's work uh, was unsalvageable because it contained false doctrine. Hunius, or rather, Gerhard wrote this to Hunius in a letter. Meanwhile, I do not deny that in his books on true Christianity there occur ambiguous phrases, and in fact, some of the type which one can draw easily into the meaning of Weigel. For this reason, when the very reverend and renowned prince and lord, Duke Christian of Brunswick and Lundberg, and the Bishop of Minden sent our faculty the Latin version of the four books, True Christianity, and sought either their censure of a, or approval, I responded along with my esteemed colleagues in this vein, that we were prepared to explain the things which appeared in books one, two, and four, 
Although, with the substitution of more appropriate phrasing and heading off any corruption to the extent that we could do that, but that he had arranged Book 3 in such a way that one could scarcely correct it without the loss of a greater part thereof. For this reason, we refused our approval of the book. What's he saying here? First, aren't used ambiguous phrases that could easily be read as Weigel's Paracelsian mysticism. Second, the Weigelian phrases in Book 1, 2, and 4 of True Christianity could be fixed with more appropriate phrasing, but Book 3 is unsalvageable because you'd have to you'd have to overhaul the majority of that book. And finally, because of all this, the theological faculty at the University of Jena, including Gerhard himself, refused to approve true Christianity and to recommend it for Christian reading. At, towards the end of that very same letter, Gerhard writes to Hunius, I think there are two reasons for this inappropriate and dangerous phrasing. The first, that he was especially given to the study of medicine in the academies and had not yet shaped his judgment about theological controversies by listening to lectures and holding discussions. But the second, that the reading of the books of Paracelsus and Weigel pleased him. For an eyewitness testifies that Arndt brought from them many things into his books on true Christianity. In the meantime, I am sure of this, that he feels more correctly than he speaks, because he is looking only to his goal and target that he may heat up the cooling spirits of people in an enthusiasm for godliness. Gerhard speaks as well of his old friend as possible, according to the Eighth Commandment. He thinks his reasons for Arndt's inappropriate and dangerous phrasings are that while he was in school, he was simply more interested in medicine, uh, and because of that, he read the works of Paracelsus, a physician, uh, and then also he imbibed the works of Weigel, the mystic, who followed Paracelsus' ideas. Gerhard really puts the best construction on Arndt's work when he says he feels more correctly than he speaks, by which he means his heart's in the right place uh, in wanting to stir people up for godliness, but his execution of it's lacking because of his use of uh, Weigel and Paracelsus. Uh, Gerhard even points out at the close of his letter that the popularity and the danger of Arndt's work, that those were the reasons that he wrote his own devotional work, the School of Pietatis, the School of Godliness. He wrote that, he says, to show how God supplies the incentive for godliness and the rule for it from Scripture without borrowing from Paracelsus and Weigel's fanatical theology. Uh, that letter from Gerhard to Hunius you can find in Fisher's The Life of Gerhard also published by Repristination Press. Gerhard and Hunius, their concerns then were validated by a careful reading of true Christianity. Uh, Arndt distinguishes between men who are taught by the world, uh, outwardly by the letter, by which he means scripture, and the true holy man who is taught inwardly by the Holy Ghost in a way that's reminiscent of Paracelsus and Weigel. Now, while Arndt doesn't despise the scripture and preaching like Weigel did, He teaches his readers how this hidden treasure, this pearl in the field of our hearts, is to be sought for by entering into ourselves, or rather, into God. That's in chapter 1 of book 3. He writes in the preface to book 3 that the kingdom of God is not to be sought without, but is to be found within us. Modern scholarship into this has even shown uh, that aren't included a large part of Weigel's anonymous prayer booklet in chapter 34 of book 2, and he shifted the entire center of piety to prayer. Now, now Arndt uh, was clearly influenced by Weigel more than most modern Lutherans either know or want to admit. And on top of all of this, there's no doubt that Arndt's work was the soil from which pietism sprang. Uh, Spainer's work, Pious Desires, uh, was originally written as a preface to the 1675 reprint of Arndt's true Christianity. What isn't certain is how much of Weigel's fanatical theology entered into the pietistic movement via Arndt. Arndt's work, it really needs to come with a disclaimer that tells people it didn't pass doctrinal review. It was rejected by the theological faculty at Jena for Christian use. Uh, And so today, when people peddle it, we need to be wary of Arndt's true Christianity. even because when his close friend, Johann Gerhard, while still being as gentle as he could, still couldn't recommend it for Christian use, that should tell us something. 
A far better alternative to true Christianity is Gerhard's Schola Pietatis, School of Godliness. It exists in five volumes. The first three are now in English, again, through Repristination Press. Uh, Gerhard's devotional material, it can be read without having to wonder uh, about problematic phrases and the influence of Paracelsus, Weigel, and other mystics. Uh, Gerhard's work is the Lutheran answer to Arndt's inward-focused, uh, mystical piety. It leads Christians to godliness that flows not from within, uh, but from the external means of the means of grace, the word and the sacrament. You can find uh, Repristination Press on Amazon. You can also go to Repristination Press, search for it in Google, where you can find Scola Pietatis. Uh, you can also find uh, Hunius' uh, Principia Theologia Fanaticae as well. Check those out. And as we said before, if you're going to read, drink some coffee in one of these as well. Thanks for watching ATP. We'll catch you next time.